check one two check check welcome everyone hey how many of you have been here already this week so the first night we had our own drew pace how awesome yeah and then we had pastor ben jameson from fuma yeah amazing he's my old pastor and friend so that was really cool um then last night how about the deans yeah yeah and pastor scott david brought a word didn't he yeah those rocks i was worried for a minute like <laughs> I know, no, I was like, where is he going with this? I'm ducking. Um, no, I'm so excited. I'm really excited for tonight. I'm really excited for tonight because this is world-class music right here. But more than music for a concert, they're going to lead us into worship. We came here to worship the Lord, not to, not to sit and watch a concert tonight. So um, I'm going to um, pray us in, but I'm going to ask that you get on your feet if you're able. And we're going to worship tonight. We're going to we're going to participate. We're going to honor him because he's worthy of worship. Amen. So, Father God, I thank you. I thank you for these um, absolutely sold out servant ones who lead us week after week into your presence, God. Through their worship, they lead us beautifully, God. We thank you for their talent and their laid down lives and what we don't see what we don't see and how they prepare and they practice and they come and they serve you Lord and serve us so God tonight we thank you for them but we thank you God that we get to gather in open air and praise your name and not fear and not worry about what's going to happen to us we're free in this nation and we get to worship you God so we're going to worship you we're not going to hold back we're not going to let the rocks cry out because we won't we're going to worship you because you're worthy of our praise God and I thank you for it Lord I thank you we can do that in Jesus name how y'all doing this evening all right y'all better get ready <laughs>
chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan. Now you call me citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open. That's when you call my so much but I can't jump up here or else everything shakes. <laughs> There's honey in the rock, water in the stone, men are on the ground no matter where I go. I don't need to worry now that I know. There's honey in the rock Pray for a miracle Thirsty for the living well And only you can satisfy Sweetness at the mercy seat Now I've tasted and it's not hard to that only you can satisfy There's honey in the rock There's honey in the rock There's honey in the rock Oh, there's honey in the rock The freedom oh, where the Spirit is Keep looking, I keep 
It's such a blessing to be here this evening with y'all. I guess we're doing the offering. I'm pretty sure like normal. I guess we'll do it now. Sounds like a good plan. No, that's a negative. Ten four. <laughs> guess we ain't doing that tonight. Ten four. <laughs> yeah, I was just playing. So. Our fight is with weapons unseen. Your enemies crush to their knees as we rise up in worship. When trials unleash like a We cry out in a worship. The victory is yours. You're riding on the sword. Your name is unfailing. The kingdoms arise and fall. Your throne will stand in all. Your name is unshaken. What hell meant to break me has failed. And now nothing will silence my praise. I will cry. No. 
storms are rise and fall, and your throne will stand to it all. Your name is unshaken, you roar like thunder, nothing can tame your God. Y'all, but I, I, I'm ready to hear this word this evening. Father, we just stay in an attitude of worship as we um, as we approach the word, Lord. I thank you, God. I thank you for Miss Stacy Fincham, the words she brought last year about um, Pilate standing before the truth, Jesus, capital T, the truth, and asking what is truth. Tonight, God, we come and we're gonna we're gonna sit before your truth tonight. God, would you open our hearts to hear and receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow. You guys are amazing. I, I'm like, that was beautiful. That was so beautiful. I was getting blessed. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I tell you what. I love Freedom Worship Band. Uh, my sister and brother-in-law are excellent, and they are just have an anointing. But I was really excited to hear you guys again, um, and you, your team is amazing. I'm so thankful to be here. I'm thankful for your pastor and his wife. Uh, we go back a few years, and um, I'm grateful for their family and just the, the fact that they would trust me to come here is um, it makes me tremble. It's, it's something that I, I am just honored to be here. And whew, I, I feel his presence. I don't know if y'all do, but I do. It is strong up here. Um, so I hope I can, I can deliver this. You know, I, I have a word, but there's just something else that I felt like I should share real quick before I get into this, which has nothing to do... <laughs> with my message tonight, but can I just tell you this? The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, in Psalms it tells us that he lays the foundation of his chambers on the waters. And if you just think about that for a second, we just sang about him riding on the storm. 
There's something so powerful about our God that he can make what is unstable stable. And that's what we need. I look around and I see an unstable world and we need the firmness of the rock Christ Jesus. He lays the, the, the foundation of his chambers on the waters. That blows my mind because any builder knows that you build on something that's concrete. You build on a rock, you build on something that is firm, not on something that is fluid. But that's how cool God is. But then you take it a step further. The disciples are out on the boat and there's a storm and they're rowing and they're, they're frustrated and sad and, and, and they're, they think they're going to die, right? And the next thing you know, they see this man walking towards them and they're like, it's a ghost, right? And they begin to get afraid. And then Jesus says, it's, it's me. Don't be afraid. I love it. Immediately, Jesus tells them, don't be afraid. He doesn't want us to, to walk a second in fear. And so Peter says, if it's you, bid me to come on the water. Now, that's a pretty like gutsy statement right there. I don't know about you, but that wouldn't have been my choice. I would have been like, if it's you, Jesus, get here quick, right? Not let me come to you on the storm. But he's like, if it's you, bid me to come. And Jesus says, come. Peter did not walk on the water. He walked on the word because the word is what makes it stable. The word is what brought concrete to that water and let him walk on there. I'm telling you, we go through such storms in life and what we need to do is get a hold of a word. You need a word to get a hold of and you stand on that word and you keep that word with you and when everything is shaking and the storm is coming and it's blowing and it feels like you're just going to topple over, you keep your feet planted on that word because who is the word? But the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Amen? It's Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ. He comes to make unstable things stable. Right? Amen. So now for the message of the hour. Amen. We can all go home. Hallelujah. Right? Everybody's like, thank you, Jesus. We're ready for, for nighttime. No, I have a word. So we're going to go to Matthew chapter 25. I've heard this story so many times growing up in just different ways, but the Lord really just showed me something about it regarding this generation. So I want to share it with you. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, <clears throat> and I think it's something that we need in this hour. So um, I pray that it will minister to you <laughs> like it ministers to me. Have you guys uh, ever experienced uh, a low phone battery? Anybody? <laughs> yeah. So does it make you kind of panicky? Anybody? Like if you see, if you see like, oh man, my phone's about to die. Like, especially if you're out somewhere and you don't have a charger and you're just like, stink. Like this is, this, did you know that low battery anxiety is a thing? <laughs> it's a thing. Trust me. You can Google it. Like it brings up, it brings up 7 million results. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm sorry. Excuse me. 27 million results. Like I, I think it's kind of, um, Something that our parents' generation never had to deal with, right? But we have to deal with this. Low battery anxiety. Like, this is a big deal. And so I was just kind of, think of the, thinking of this, and um, I, my eye caught this article, and it said, it's midday, and your phone's battery is dangerously close to the 20% mark. If you're like the majority of people, that red icon will leave you panicked, annoyed, and hunting for a spare charger. So the LG has dubbed this, this condition low battery anxiety and says that nearly 9 out of 10 people suffer from fear of losing power on their phone. I, I know some of you are like rolling your eyes, right, because it is ridiculous. But they, serve, they surveyed thousands of people, and although it's not a real illness or anxiety disorder, they've dubbed it the low battery anxiety to exemplify the behavior of people who are charging or changing, excuse me, their everyday lives just to accommodate their dying phone battery. So it says that the survey found that nearly 9 out of 10 
People felt panic when their phone battery drops below 20%. Results of this extensive study show shocking re results. They show, they show pan panic if their battery drops below 20%. And although we can't classify low battery anxiety as a true anxiety disorder, they know that this is a real thing and it exists in people's lives. So it says 32% of people that they surveyed will drop everything to head home and charge their phone. 17% of males missed a match on a dating app because their phone died. 60% have blamed a dead phone for not speaking to a loved one. Has anyone said, Mom, my phone died? Like, right? It's a, it's a thing. It's a, let's just, let's just blame it on the phone. Or I, I couldn't hear you. 32% made a U-turn in order return, to return to home and charge their phone. 71% won't lend their charger to someone else, even if it's their backup charger. 33% have delayed a date or a meeting simply because they had a low battery. So they had to charge it before they could leave. And so they said that um, some of the symptoms are asking a total stranger to charge their smartphone. <laughs> that, that happens. Arguing with a significant other because of an unanswered call or text. Ordering something at a bar or a restaurant just so you can use the power outlet to charge your phone. Secretly borrowing someone else's charger or owning three or more smartphone charging cables. So I thought that was hilarious because I was like, wow, that's, that's quite a picture of the world that we live in today, right? That we are so consumed with this thing that we hold in our hands that keeps us in communication with people or keeps us active on our social media or whatever. So with that in mind, let's go to Matthew chapter 25. It says, then the kingdom of heaven, starting verse one, shall be likened to 10 virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wives and five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you, not, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Amen. Wow. What a scripture and what a picture that we have. Our phones are our primary source of communication these days. It's our way to keep in contact with everyone. But I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say this again and again. Your cell phone is worthless unless you have a charger. Right? Your lamp is worthless unless you have oil. And in those days, that was the way that they could see. That was, that was their, their electricity. That was the way that they were able to view life in the dark was with their lamp. And they had to have oil for that lamp. It was necessary to keep it burning. And I think about this and I think about the fact that you and I are called from this scripture to have not only oil, but to have extra, right? We have a God who has created us for connection. And this might seem like such an elementary sermon. This might seem like a message that is just so ABC, one, two, three. But I'm telling you that there's times in our lives that we have to go back to the basics. And we have to remember the things that we learned. You know, 
the uh, Challenger that exploded in the 80s. They said when they studied that and they investigated it, I wish I had all the notes with me, that everything that they, they knew that happened, that happened wrong, that made that launch fail, everything that happened that day, they said they had already learned it, but had forgotten. Wow. So sometimes we have to come back to the things that we've, that we've forgotten. Sometimes we have to come back to those things. And we have a God that's created us for, for connection. You know, we can look at the things that are going on in this world, and, and I, I think all of us could say that we never realized it was going to get here this fast, this quick, right? And there's many people who are buzzing around and talking about the Antichrist. But as the church, we should be looking for Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. We keep our eyes fixed on the one who's coming. Who's coming. And he's coming at midnight. He's going to come in an hour that we don't know. The scripture just told us that. And he's going to come back for a bride that's ready and waiting for him. He's coming back for those of us who have oil in our lamps but we also have extra. We're also there with our extra, the extra oil in our lamps. We have, you know, Jesus wants us to be connected to him. He wants us to be plugged into him. I want you to think about this. Too many these days are disengaging. Maybe, maybe you see it. Maybe you see it in your family. Maybe you see it in your home. Maybe you see it in some friendships. People that used to be so close to Jesus, and now it's just kind of a ho-hum thing. If I'm there, I'm there. If I'm not, eh, you know, getting maybe kind of blasé about it. But as people are disengaging and not staying plugged in, it's going to cost them more than they can pay. It's going to cost them more than they can pay. You know, I think I'm just going to go off here a little bit, and I think I'll be all right. <laughs> But I'm going to step on some toes, maybe. I think one thing COVID did do is expose how, church, how sick the church really is. Right? We need the body of Christ. Scripture says in Hebrews 10.25, not forsaking the, assemblies of, the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. That day in scripture is capitalized. It's a capital D. It's talking about the day when Jesus comes back and we stand before him. Each one of us are going to give an account. What did you do at the time that you had? What were you doing here? Were you staying connected? Were you staying connected to the one who keeps us lit? Were you staying connected to the one who keeps us charged? Did you keep your relationship with Jesus? Did you keep it on firm ground, on firm standing? If there's one thing I know is that you got to know how to get in. Those virgins, they were all virgins, right? They were all pure, but five of them were wise. Five of them cared about their lamp. Five of them cared about the relationship they had with their bridegroom. And we need to know how to get in. I don't want to be the one standing on the outside of a closed door wishing I could get in. I can't afford to unplug from Christ. I can't afford to disengage. I can't afford afford to leave my charger. I can't afford to be cut off from communication. We have got to stay connected to Jesus. He's the one that keeps us charged up. He's the one that helps us through it all. He's the one that helps us. He's the one that keeps us. You know, I, I know sometimes we can be like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm a grown adult, but you start to feel the tears coming. Don't hold it back. This is a way for your soul to connect to your father. You are made to connect with him. Some ways of connecting are deeper than others. But we've got to understand that when we come into the house of God, when we come into a place of worship, Treat it like it is a moment to meet with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But then don't leave it there that day. On Monday, get up and spend some time with Jesus. On Tuesday, spend some time with Jesus. We've got to keep our lamps lit and we have to keep the oil in in the vessel. We have to.
have to keep extra. I feel like sometimes we've neglected the habit of coming to the altar because we say, oh, well, I've done that. I did that last week. But if we only realize that we were altered at the altar, right? There are things about us that get altered where Jesus is like, well, let's fix this part and, and, and let's hem up this area and let's fix this and scrub this area and let's keep this. But the altar is important. We can't just decide, well, well, I've been a Christian for this many years, so that's just a thing of the past. No, keep it fresh. If there's anything that you can realize about a relationship is that you've got to keep at it. You've got to stay in the mix, right? You've got to stay involved and stay engaged. It's a relationship with, with, with Jesus that we have. I love it. You know, Jesus isn't coming back for some for some prostitute. He's not coming back for some weekend lover that only decides to pay attention to him on Sunday. He's not coming back for a bride that says, oh, well, it's it's not Wednesday yet. Like, do we really need time together now? No, he's coming back for a bride whose heart burns for his. You study in, in Revelation and you read how his eyes burn with fire. And we've got to get back to the place, church, where we get locked in the gaze of his eyes and we begin to burn like he's burning. You see, if the King of kings and Lord of lords has done all that he can to win our affection. And he's done all that he can and he's never stopped pursuing you. Don't stop pursuing him. I want to encourage you tonight in this tent under these stars to say go after Jesus because it's in those moments that we get oil. It's in the moments that we press in. You know when they make olive oil, when they make oil, it comes from the pressing of the olives. And sometimes it's just not fun and sometimes it hurts and sometimes there's other people doing things that you would rather be doing today but Jesus is calling and he's nudging your heart somehow some way and I'm not saying here just the church in general for years the church has desperately tried to get people to connect to a pastor or a person and that's great do it but we need to connect to Jesus Because that can only work for so long. I can't answer your prayers. I can't fill you up. I can't meet your needs or hear your heart's deepest cries. We can't just have the look but deny the power. You can have the phone all day long. But if it doesn't have any power, what what, what good is it? What good is it? And that's what 2 Timothy said. He said, but know this. Well, this is a long list. And the last days, perilous times will come. I think we are in the perilous times. If anybody doesn't know, I'm just going to tell you we're here. <laughs> For men will be lovers of themselves. Have you ever heard of so many selfies? Like, woo, first let me take a selfie. <laughs> lovers of themselves. I think we can check that off the box. Yeah. Lovers of money. Well, that's been for a while. Yeah. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, Unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. From such people, turn away. He said, you can have the look all day long, but I'm looking for the power. I'm looking to see, is there anything of me in there? You know, my prayer sometimes is, Jesus, whatever doesn't look like you, whatever in me doesn't look like you, can you just take it out? Can you just take it out? We don't want to just have a phone but no charger. We don't want to just have the look but no power. When you connect with power, there's something in you that says, whoa, whoa. What just happened, I remember when we were teenagers, a long time ago, I'm talking way back. My sister and I were in a car. I think Tony was there, and we had a, a, I think it was his cousin that was driving, and we were on our way to a revival service that my dad was preaching, and we were going down the road, 
And there was a downed power line, power line, and it was just dancing in the street. Like it was, it would just hit the street, and then it would bounce up. I mean, every time it hit the ground, it would just bounce up. Well, it hit the car. Thank God we have rubber tires, right? We all felt the electricity go through it. Like it was the brightest flash. Like I was like, Jesus, is that you? Like we were, we were like, oh my goodness. And, and like, it was the brightest flash as it hit the hood and we felt the electricity go. It was like, it like jarred your heart and then it bounced off and we like, you know, continued on. Well, Jamie had to pull over and like calm himself down because it was like quite the experience. But I'm telling you, Jesus wants to do that in us. He wants to get at like such an experience with his presence that we're like, whoa, like the brightness of his glory, the electricity of his power, the energy of staying connected to him. Man, we need his presence, don't we? We need his presence. If we can just get someone to connect with God in a real way, and I know that's one of your your um, mission statements for the church, to connect. That's what we need. If we can just get if we can just get our hearts connected to Jesus, if we can just show people Jesus and they connect with him in a real way, they'll never go back. They'll keep coming back to the source. They'll keep coming back to the source. The crazy thing is, is it doesn't matter what kind of degree you have, what university you attended, what kind of training or abilities you possess. Do you know how to get into his presence? Do you know how to get into his presence? Do you know how to pray? Do you know how to worship? Do you know how to draw his heart to you? And we just witnessed that your church is teaching you that for sure. But here's the thing, the beautiful thing. Jesus is the door. So when I don't know what way to go and I don't know how, all I have to do is say Jesus and a door that we can't see just drops right in front of us. And we take a hold of that door called Jesus and we walk through and we say, God, I need your presence. I need you to help me. I need you to help me. I need you to get me through the storms of life, the unstableness of this world. Everything is twisting and turning and crazy. Lord, I need your stability. I need your presence. I need you, Jesus. When we just begin to say that, the door opens to his presence. Nothing matters unless you know how to get in. Nothing matters unless you know how to get in. Man, the scripture says that the bridegroom, he, a, a cry went out at midnight and they heard that the, bar, the bridegroom was coming and they all arose and they trimmed their lamps. And then the foolish said to the wise, give us of your oil. And the wise said, no, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go to those that sell and get some for yourself. Here's the thing. We just read that 71% of people are not going to lend their extra charger to anybody. But could we get that way spiritually? Right? Is there any way that we could get as passionate about our walk with Jesus as we are about keeping up the battery of our phone? Because in the whole scheme of life, what really, really matters is our relationship with Jesus. A hundred years from now, it doesn't matter what kind of iPhone you had. A hundred years from now, it doesn't matter anything that we're doing. It matters that we had a relationship with Jesus and we knew how to get in. It matters that we were connected. These, these foolish virgins, they were just, they were just blasé about their relationship with the bridegroom. They were not ready. They were not, and they said to the wise, give us of your oil. But they said no. And I'm telling you that when you spend time with God and you have an intimacy with Jesus, it's attractive to others. And they'll come to you and they'll be like, oh, would you pray for me? Anybody get that? Would you pray for me? And then you spend all this time praying for all of these people. And it's like, you know what? I said this to somebody one time. I had um, house sat for them, went over and took care of their animals and helped while they were away and helped take care of everything. And while I 
was there, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to anoint this house with oil. Y'all are not going to invite me to house it, right? So I was like, in the name of Jesus, you know, I'm praying over their doors. I'm praying over all the entrances of their house. And I'm just like, glory of God, come. And so then we were talking and, and, you know, she was just explaining some of the difficulties that they were going through and this and that. And you know what? I just got irritated. I just got mad at that moment. And I just said, you know what? I've done it. I fasted. I have prayed for you. I have anointed your house with oil. When are you going to do something? And they were like, and I'm like, all I hear about is how hard this is. And I'm like, I have given all I can give. But at some point, you need to take ownership of this and say, this is not okay. Why are we living in a way that is not the will of God? At some point, we need to say, you know what? If your kids are acting crazy and they're not loving Jesus, then you need to say, Jesus, I don't like how this house is and it's not okay. And I'm going to stand on your word until it changes. I'm going to stand on your word until it stabilizes. I'm going to stand on your word. If your marriage is crazy, then you need to stand on the word of God and say what God has joined together. Let no man, let no devil, let no demon separate. I'm standing on the word of God. I made a vow and we're going to see this marriage change. We're going to see God come and bring stability to something that's unstable. Amen. But too many times we did, we lay down and just let the devil do whatever he wants to do. But we are the ones with the connection. Just don't have a form of something but deny the power. Bring the power into the situation. Jesus, come. Move in this situation. You have unsaved loved ones. Man, I do. And I don't want to see them bust hell wide open. I want to see them get touched by the glory of God. I want to see their lives change. So what do we do? We stand in the gap and we say, it is not your will that any should perish. So I'm going to stand here and I'm going to declare the word of God over them until they stabilize. You know, we, we, we will say if someone has a medical condition, the doctors are coming in and be like, well, we finally got them in stable condition. You know, like the, all their vitals are beginning to stabilize. And, they're, and then it's like a relief, right? Because when things are off and blood pressure is going crazy, it causes all kinds of problems. And people, you know, you just don't know if they're going to make it. Well, here's the thing. The devil wants to keep us in an unsteady, unstable condition where we're just constantly like all over the place but we need to in the name of Jesus say stand firm stand firm maybe you need to speak out loud and you need to declare to the enemy you need to say house stand firm pillar stand firm marriage stand firm in the name of Jesus my family will stand firm maybe you need to speak to your bank account hold up your checkbook do we even have that hold up your cell phone open up your bank app right <laughs> keep that thing charged and you gotta yell at it you gotta speak to it you gotta say in the name of Jesus stabilize this Amen. wow what would happen if we treated our relationship with Jesus like we do our phone, checking on him in the morning, yes. right before we go to bed, all throughout the day? <sighs> Come on, I'm guilty too. I know. I know. It's so easy. But what if every time we picked it up, we thought, whoa, where's my oil? What if every time we picked up, do I have the extra oil? Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I need you. I need you. I need you. I need you. I need you first. You see, here's the thing. You'll get out of your Christian walk what you put in it. Right? Just like anything else. I mean, you can halfway exercise. That's what I do. <laughs> I'm like, okay. I did like 10 things. Yay! And then I'm like, wow. Why didn't anything change? But that's what we do with Jesus. Right? Right? We we're just like flippant about it. And they were like, oh, look at that person over there. Like really get in touch by God. But Jesus doesn't want to touch me. Yes, he does. Press into him. Don't just have an appearance of loving him. Love him. Just settle it. Love him. Some days you don't feel like it. Trust me. 
But you just tell yourself, self, <laughs> Stacy, I command my soul. That's what David did. I command my soul. Man, you don't just get married one day, tell them I love you, walk down the aisle, have your honeymoon, and then never, ever, 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 ever make an effort. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Why would we ever think that we can do that with Jesus? Say a prayer at an altar and then walk away and never put any effort into your relationship with him. Whew. You can't coast on someone else's relationship. Somebody else is not going to be so willing to give you their charger. Someone else is not going to be so willing to give you their oil because it costs something. It takes time. You know, it takes time to charge your phone battery. It does. You, at some point, you have to connect to the wall. At some point, you have to do that. And we're okay with that. We completely understand that. We get that. That's something that we absolutely understand. And we're even willing to put off going somewhere or doing something until we have that charge that we need. So why wouldn't we do that with our daily walk with Jesus? What if we did that? What if we spent some time to get full with the Holy Spirit? What if we had time in the Word? What if we had time in worship? What if we said, you know what? Every Sunday, Wednesday, whenever else there's service, I'm not going to make my decision that morning of whether or not I'm going to go. What if we just said, you know what? This is who I am. If it's Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, whenever it is, I'm going to be there because this is who I am. I'm working on this relationship with Jesus. He's all I am. He's all I ever needed. Don't get caught without your oil. Don't get caught without your charger. Don't be the foolish ones who had the door shut on them. You can't get in once the door closes. Man, we have to be ready. We have to have extra oil. God, make us wise. Let us stay plugged in. We need to we need to realize, we need to say, Jesus, I need to stay plugged in. I need to stay. I want to live my life out of overflow. Not panicking because my battery's low, right? Not, I want to stay so connected to the Holy Ghost charger who's constantly filling me up. I want to be ready. You see, all of us want the Super Bowl moments, right? But then we just don't want to show up for practice. But we all know that in order to get to Super Bowl, you've got to have been willing to put, into, put in the work, right? How can we ever expect to make a winning play on the field if we never put in the time? Jesus, I'll say it again, isn't after a paid lover, a prostitute, or a harlot. He's looking for the one whose heart burns for his. Revelation 2, verse 4, it says, Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. If you read the first part of that, that letter to the church, they did everything right. They were doing all the things right. But you know what the title of that is? In my Bible, there's a little title that gives a little title of all the churches, and it says the loveless church. Wow. 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 He said, you've done all these things right, but this, this is what I have against you. You don't love me. You've left your first love. You've forsaken your first love. I heard this story, a true story. A minister who had reached the heights of becoming well-known and respected among churches and Christian circles. He had unfortunately had a moral failure and it actually became very public. And so many years later, after a restored marriage and a restored ministry, he was invited to speak at a conference encouraging young ministers and leaders. He got up to the microphone and tears began to pour down his face. And he walked up and he said, never lose your first love. He stepped back, and young ministers and leaders that were there waiting to listen to this man, poised, about to write notes, just wanting to hear what he would teach them. 
he stepped back up to the microphone, tears streaming down his face, and he said, never lose your first love. And then one more time, he stepped back up to the microphone, and he said, never lose your first love. And that was it, the entirety of his message. That's the crux, that's the key, that's the ticket. Whatever you do, don't lose your first love. The kingdom, it, it all rises and falls on seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What did they say? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. Then all of the other things will add up and line up. Come on. It's time to get some oil, church. It's time to get oil for yourself. It's time to not try to borrow it. And I'm not saying that we can't go to our pastor for prayer. I'm not saying that, please. I'm not saying don't come to me for prayer. I'm just saying that if that's a constant pattern in your life and you choose to go to someone first to pray for you until you go to, to, until you have spent time with the source yourself connected, then there's something that needs to change. We need our own oil. Tonight, I believe that Jesus wants to fill us all up and give us extra We don't always need to get it from someone else who's been wise and has history with God. You see, that's the beauty of spending time with him. That's the beauty of intimacy. Is you can tell when someone has history with God. When someone has equity. When someone has put in the the blood, the sweat, and the tears. And you can walk up to them and they just ooze with the presence of God. You can tell because they've spent time plugged in, because they've spent time connected to the source. It's time to get history, our own history with God. It's time to press in, it's time to hear the words of a minister who says, never lose your first love. I've been through it, he said. I've, I've experienced it all, but never lose your first love. There's an old, old song in the worship team, if you would come. <clears throat> don't worry, you don't have to sing this song. <laughs> but you guys probably have heard this song. That old song called The Alabaster Box. And she sings and she says, you weren't there the night that he found me. You weren't there. You didn't feel what I felt when he wrapped his loving arms around me. You don't know the cost of the oil in my alabaster box. You see, when we get that oil and we have that extra oil, our lamps will be lit. We'll be ready when the bridegroom comes because our relationship is intact because our relationship was something that we valued and we took care of. We'll be ready. We'll be ready. Other people might be like, wait, give me some of your oil. And you'll have to say, no, you don't know what mine cost. You don't know the mornings. You don't know the nights. You don't know the times that I got up in the middle of the night and laid on the floor. You don't know. You don't know the early morning or the late nights. You don't know the times throughout the day when I just had to get that connection back with Jesus and I had to plug in and say, God, something's off, something's not right, something's not working, and I need you extra. We live in a world that's extra, right? What if you and I were a little extra about his presence? What if you and I were a little bit extra about his presence and we just said, hey, I just got a text from from a friend of mine and she was like, Stacy, do you ever think that Jesus is tired of me? And I'm like, never. And she's like, I've been extra needy lately. I'm like, he loves it. Trust me. 
keep pressing in. Don't stop. He wants to hear your voice. He wants to hear your cries. He waits to be wanted. We have a world that blasphemes his name and speaks so lightly of him, blames him for everything. You see, that's the world that we live in, the, the accuser. The accuser, Satan himself, is such a slanderer. He loves to accuse God to you. He loves to accuse the Father to you. Oh, well, if Jesus really loved you, then you wouldn't be going through this. If Jesus really cared, he's an accuser. Recognize his voice. He's accusing Jesus to you. He's good at it. We could easily just give in and believe those lies. Oh, if God really cared about this world, yes! For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He did make a way. We have to take the time to take the way. We have to, we have to realize that there is a way. He didn't leave us here orphans. He said, I'm here. But the accuser loves to accuse God. He loves to accuse the Father. He loves to accuse your husband. He loves to accuse your wife. He loves to accuse your parents. Right? Amen? He's an accuser of the brethren. He loves to accuse your church family. That's who he is. But we got to put him in his place and say, no, I hear your, your sickening lies. I hear that accusing voice. Anytime you hear that accusing voice, step back. Where, who, who told me that? Where did that come from? Where was that birthed from? Where was that birthed from? You know what separates Christians from the world? Jesus said it in John 8. He said it in John 17. He said, sanctify them, Father. John 17, 17. Sanctify them by your truth. That's what separates us. Truth. Truth separates us from the world. We talked about it last year, right? Pilate standing before truth, asking what is truth? Truth is what separates us from the world. Jesus said in John 8, you are of your father, the devil. He was a murderer from the beginning. He's a liar. All he ever says is lies. Just like Americans speak English, just like Germans speak German, just like Hispanic people mostly speak Spanish, the devil speaks lies. That's all he can say. Whenever he's talking, he's lying. And he loves to lie to us. He loves to lie to all oh, you've you've spent enough time. You've got enough oil. No, get in his presence. Pay the price. Get get a hold of the oil. Press in. Go after his name. Go after his presence. Never lose your first love. I think it's amazing. James 4 8. The scripture says, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. A double-minded person is unstable in all their ways. That's what James tells us. A double-minded person is unstable. What do we have to do to get that stability? Have a mind of one thing, Jesus. I'm after you. I'm after you. He brings stability to what is unstable. He brings stability to what is unstable. We need to, we need to get a single-minded focus. Jesus, I'm drawing near to you. Jesus, I'm drawing near to you. You know what the beauty is? When we take one step towards God, then he will come and close the gap because that's how powerful he is. It all comes back. And it all comes down to, draw me close, Jesus, and never let me go. It all comes back to, falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I've ever done. 
it all comes back to staying in love and keeping your first love fire. Will you stand with me tonight? Lord Jesus, we want to press in tonight, God. We want to press into your voice. We want to press into your presence. Lord, we want to plug in. We want to be connected. We don't want to be caught without oil. Lord, we want to be full. We want to be so filled, but we also want to have extra. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would help us, God, as the body of Christ, as a church, that we wouldn't do all the things right and check all the boxes, but forget to fall in love with you every day. Lord, I pray a fresh love and a fresh fire. God, I pray that you would give us burning hearts. Lord, don't let our love grow cold. Light the fire again. In Jesus' name, come on, lift your hands with me tonight. Because I would dare say that every single one of us in this room, we need some extra fire. We need some extra love. We need it. We need a burn for him. Jesus. Jesus, I pray, let us press into you, God. Lord, I pray that we would connect to you like we never have before. I pray that we would stay connected, God. I pray in the name of Jesus that every time our battery goes low on our phone, that we would think about the spiritual status of our life, that we would think about our connectivity to you. I pray in the name of Jesus that we would value the oil and Lord, that we would choose to put in the time. We would choose, God, to spend the time with you that we need to get charged up and filled up, Lord. That we wouldn't be caught off guard. God, that we wouldn't be caught off guard. Jesus, I pray. I pray a fresh love. I pray a first love fire to burn in every heart. A first love love. Maybe you're here tonight and you would just say, that's me. Let's do what the scripture says. The scripture said, draw near to God and he would draw near to you. So I'm asking you tonight, I'm going to challenge you, make a move. Make a move from your seat towards him. Make a move from your seat towards him, whatever that means to you. If you want to come to the front, if you want to take a step to the side aisle, whatever you need to do, but just make a move towards God. Make a move towards him and say, Jesus, this is me drawing close to you, drawing close to you. He said, draw near to me and I, I will draw near to you. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus, burn in us, burn in us. Burn in us, God. Let the flame, let the flame of love begin to overtake, begin to overtake our hearts, oh God. Set us ablaze, Jesus. Set us ablaze. Let us burn with passion. Lord, we don't want to be part-time lovers, but Jesus, we want to burn for your heart. Lord, we want to pursue you, God. You have pursued us. Lord, we want to pursue you back. We want to press into your heart. Jesus, I pray. I pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Maybe you're here tonight and you would say, Stacy, there's some situations in my home that are unstable. There are some situations in my family. There are some situations at work that are unstable and it's not okay. And you would just say, I need, I need a word. I need a word that I can stand on. Would you just wave your hand and say, Jesus, I'm here. Give me a word. Give me a word that I can stand on, that I can walk on in the middle of the storm. In the middle of the storm. In the middle of the storm. Bring stability. Right now, Jesus, every hand, God, every hand, Lord, every situation, every life, God, I pray in the name of Jesus, and I speak peace, be still. Let the storm settle at the sound of your voice. Lord, I pray that you would bring a word and that you would fill every heart, God. Bring stability to every unstable situation, God. We thank you, Jesus, for moving. We thank you for what you're doing. 
We thank you, Jesus. Come on, worship team. Go ahead. songs lately and I think it's because it the lyrics it, they're so simple but it says I run to the father again and again and again and again and I think Stacy touched on it some but 
Jesus wants you to run to him. He never gets tired of your hurt. He never gets tired of your strife. He does not get sick of your sickness. He wants you to run into his presence, into his healing, because what he has for you is so good. And if we just run to him, because I think sometimes we get scared and we think, no, he's done with me because people get done with us, right? We're flawed and we think that God is flawed, but he's not, he's perfect. And he wants you to run. He doesn't want, just want you to come and pray. He wants you to run. He wants you to sprint into his presence and into his fullness and into his grace because he's so good. He is so good. So I just think we should just sit in this time of worship. And if you need to leave, you can. But I know that there are people here. I feel it. They've carried burdens and we just need to run to the Father. And we need to break those chains because what we think of ourselves, our perception is wrong. He has so much freedom for us. If we just run to him and we run into his freedom, he will break those chains off of us. Amen. We're free. Jesus, the victory is his. He's won. Our fight is with weapons unseen. We fight with prayer. We do not need to win this battle. He's got it. So if we just run to him, he'll keep us safe. So I encourage you to just listen to the lyrics and lift your hands. Even if you don't know the words, just sit in the moment. I've carried a burden for too long on my own And I wasn't created to bear it alone And I hear your invitation My soul needs a friend And so I run to the Father again and again and again and again Oh, 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 oh Cause you saw my condition And had a plan Your son for redemption, the price for my heart. Oh, and I don't have a context for that kind of love. I don't understand. I can't comprehend. My soul needs a friend So I run to the Father again And again and again and again Oh, oh, oh Again and again and again and again Oh, oh, oh Done with the hiding, no reason to wait. 
my heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend. So I run to the Father again and again. I run to the Father, I fall into grace. I'm done with the hiding, the reason to wait. Cause my heart found a surgeon, my soul found a friend. So I run to the Father again and again and again and again. Oh, 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 again and again and again and again. Oh, 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 again and again. My heart has been in your sight. Before my first bed, running into your arms, it's running to life from death, and I feel this rush deep in my chest. Your mercy is calling out, and just as I am, God, you pull me. My soul needs a friend, so I run to the Father again and again. Heart has been in your sight. My heart 
long before my first breath and running into So I run to the Father again and again. I run to the Father. I fall into grace. I'm done with the hiding. No reason to wait. Oh, and my heart found a surgeon. My soul found a friend. So I run to the Father again and again and again and again. saying linger linger but don't just linger at your chair when the man at the pool of Bethesda had laid there all those years in the same spot Jesus asked him do you want to be made whole then stretch out your hand right like the withered hand stretch out your hand the man the man that lay by the pool do you want to be well everyone do you want like when he told the man the um the one that they brought in it was a paralytic do you want to be healed he said i forgive your sins get up and take your mat everyone he gave them something to do go and wash go and show yourself to the priest it was always something to do it's always stretch out your hand it was get up it was go he did not say stay the only time he said stay was to stay and pray until the holy spirit fell upon them and then they went so if Holy Spirit has come on you tonight, then you should be going. If he hasn't come yet, then maybe you need to stretch out a hand or maybe you need to get up and walk or maybe you need to take up your mat. But he is here. I go to the altar all the time in church because I figure Jesus is closest to the front. And I'm sorry. Sometimes I think it's so much harder for men. I think it's so much harder for you. It's easy for us women to love Jesus. It's easy for us to fall at his feet and ask for more. And it's hard for you men because you've got to be strong and you've got to be tough and you've got to look cool. But I'm going to tell you, the coolest place you can be right now is up here meeting with Jesus. Run to the Father. He always asks us to do something, to make another step. And I'm so proud of Maddie. She stepped out and just led you all a minute ago and, and shared her heart. That was an act of faith. That was an act of obedience to share and to continue that. So I'm going to ask you to step out in obedience and come up front. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because he's here to meet with us tonight. And we shouldn't take it casual. We don't know what's on the other side of that ride home. We are not promised tomorrow. We're not promised this tent in the morning. Another opportunity. We're not promised another opportunity to meet with Jesus. We need to take this one. We need to take this one.
melting away My heart needs a surgeon My soul needs a friend So I run to the Father again and again and again Son for redemption, the price for my heart. No, oh, and I don't have a car taste for that kind of love. I don't understand, I can't comprehend. All I know is I. I'm done with the hiding, the reason the way, cause my heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend, and so I run to the Father again and again and again. This is what I need to do. Y'all sing it out. So I run to the Father again and again. I run to the Father, fall into grace. I'm done with the hiding, the reason to wait. In my heart found a surgeon, my soul found a friend. So I run to the Father again and again and again and again. you and to save me he had a plan for you he had a purpose for your life and he wants you to run into him he wants you to feel his freedom he wants you to feel his peace because what he has for you is so good and I'm so thankful that he knew he knew what I was going to struggle with he knew it and he still sent his son 
He knew that I was going to be a sinner. He knew I was going to fail. He knew every single time I would fail him, I would fall short. And he sent his only son to die for me. And now he's open his open arms. I can run to him whenever, he, whenever I need to. He never gets sick of me. He never gets tired. I can just run to him, and he wants me to run to him. Not only can I, but he wants me there. And I'm just so blessed by that tonight. That is so amazing. And I'm so thankful that we have this community and we can all come out and do this. But I just really want us to think, think on that, the fact that we can run to the Father and that we need to be ready for when he comes back because he's done all this goodness for us. He has so much good for us. He sent his son to die, and now he's, he's always there. He's, you never mess up too many times. He's always open for you over and over again and again and again. And you can never, he never gets tired. He loves it when you run to him. And I think that is so beautiful. And I'm so thankful that Miss Stacy could come and like share that message that was so powerful. I mean, God is here, guys. His presence is yeah, so thick right now. Stacey. I mean, it's amazing. excited for our church you know like we have these two new staff members like I think that God is really gonna do something you know like this is so exciting can we get excited for that like that is crazy he is here and he is changing lives I believe that he is doing things right now I have faith that those people that you've been praying for that your prayers are gonna be answered in Jesus name he is gonna answer them there's gonna be healing there's gonna be peace there's gonna be restoration in relationships because that is the God that we serve he is all-powerful. He is all-knowing, and He loves you. He loves you so, so much that He is willing for you to run to Him over and over and over again. So we're just going to sit in His presence. We can have people pray. I mean, if you just want to sit and appreciate God's goodness with me, that's what we're going to do. I mean, I'm not sick of this song yet, so we're going to redo it from the start. And I just, obviously, if you have to go, if you need that you have somebody, a place to be, some you can feel free there's no pressure we're not holding you here but if you want to just sit in God's goodness and experience his presence for a little bit longer because I know I do I love this feeling it's so good and fulfilling and warm so we're gonna sing this from first I will one. tell y'all one thing if you have never been in his presence it took me a really long time to get there but once you decide to do it now is the time do not wait do not put it off He's here. He wants you to come here. This is your place. It took me a really long time to do it. Don't worry about who's next to you. Don't worry about who's looking at you. This is between you and him. What he has for it's you is time. so good. It's so good, I promise. Because I sat in that chair my whole life. I've been a pastor's kid my entire life. And I sat there and I didn't step into the potential that God had for me because I was worried about what other people were thinking. And let me tell you, once you do, it is so free. Once you just realize how amazing he is and how perfect he is, it's scary, sure. But if you need to come, there's no judgment here, I promise. I've carried a burden for too long on my own. I wasn't created to bear it alone. And I hear your invitation to let it all go. Yeah, I see it now. I'm laying it down. Plan from the start. 
star Your son for redemption The price for my heart Oh, and I don't have a contest For that kind of love I don't understand I can't comprehend All I know done with the hiding, no reason to wait, cause my heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend, and so I run to the Father again and again and again and again. something that's great they might be tired back there I don't really know but you can bring them we're gonna go over glorious day one more time and you can just jump and praise God and 